Um, the n next one is uh, right. Te Can we Patika move to receive the report? Um, Rākai yeah. Hautu, uh, Banks Peninsula Community Board Report. Um, sorry. Uh, sorry. What? Oh, sorry, my apologies. What? Uh, sorry? I was just trying to check. Uh, so we've received that, we've done that resolution, but the Community Board Report, have we received that? Oh, sorry, that wasn't clear. I just, I had sorry, a Sorry, I on said place. there was an amended, I put the amended motion. I put the motion as amended. I did. I said that separately. So we're, we're done with that report. Thank you. I wasn't aware that you had sent through by email another amendment. I wasn't aware of that. It's not an amendment. It was to raise in the debate. It says proposed amendment, report. Councillor Johansson. That was to refer to the receiving report. Sorry? It was to refer to when we received the report. Right. I'll hand over to you guys. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I, we take that the um, report of the Banks Peninsula Community Board has been um, read, and should anyone have any questions at the end of that, I'll refer that to Tyrone. Um, just a few updates. One is the Strength in the Community Grants. We've just um, allocated 169250 to our community groups. Um, a total of 25 different community organisations have benefited from our Strength in the Community Grants. Um, recently in the Discretionary Response Fund, um, we have granted $3,616 to a community defibrillator based in Rapiki. Which was essentially um, a request from, from, the, from the Runaka um, in Ngāti Whiki, which is, you know, I mean, we're very big on engagement with, with, our, with our local Runaka, so it was a really good request from them. It was the only, di the, the nearest defibrillator was in, was in Littleton, so it's good to have one in Rapaki because a lot of people come and use the beach there, because it is a wonderful beach. Now we've changed um, delegations um, with the, the board has set up a, a board chair and community governance manager delegation to approve youth development fund applications. This will save costs associated with the full funding reports, um, still allow board members to have their say in this decision and improve timelines in the response to the applicants. Just to try and improve efficiencies. And yes. also as um, uh, part of uh, what we're uh, really big on at the moment with our board is, is engaging with our local um, police. So we've got um, police based in Littleton and in Nakaroa. We've had, we had um, Sergeant uh, Franco Loveridge from from Littleton Police come and visit us, and also Senior Constable Tim Johnson as well. And just to talk about local issues, and just to just to really just up the the level of engagement, just sort of voice community concerns, and you know they were there to to listen and to and to tell us about the challenges of policing out on the peninsula. I think um, some some of the really big issues are uh, get a lot of boy races out on the peninsula, that's for sure. It's uh, one of the some of the councillors will probably be aware that it's one of the one of the favourite tracks of the boy racer around the peninsula and up through Gibby's Pass. They've probably done it themselves uh, from time to time. But um, so th there are some challenges there. It's fair to say that the police are concentrating on, on BLF, but we'd really like to see see a bit more um, a bit more focus on, on the peninsula routes for boy races, mainly because of the speeds that they get up to. It's very hard to get to 150 k's an hour going down Believ, um, but very easy out on the peninsula with some tricky roads. Um, but but um, yeah, so really good to have have the police along uh, to see us. One of the real one of the major concerns, well not concerns, one of the things that both sets of police from both Akaroa and Littleton um, were talking about was the need to perhaps get some cameras. Um, on some of the uh, some of the access points into both of those townships, um, so I mean, Akaro is really one way in, one way out. Littleton's only there are three ways in and out. Um, so, so in terms of of, of burglaries, 
um, and that sort of stuff, it's, it's probably would be quite useful to have some cameras um, at some key points there to, to observe um, people going in and out of the towns. Um, but yeah, just a really good engagement and we're just looking to keep it up. So yeah, back to you, Tori. Sounds good. And the last one is a thanks come through from the community. Um, Little River community have acknowledged and th thanked the council, the new footpath on Western Valley Road in Little River. As you can see there, on a day like today, you'd quite often be pushed into the grass area and into the mud when it's raining. So having a footpath for children to get to and from school has made a huge improvement. And as you see there, fine sunny weekend. Um, scooters and everything are being well used. So no, thanks for coming back to the council for that one. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Um, any questions? Tim, and then Anne. Thank you. Look, totally get what you're saying with regards to the boy races. That's been an issue in um, our ward for a very long time along the top of the hills and just kind of scraping along within your ward as well. So um, also with regards to the speed cameras, which are really or just crime prevention cameras up in that area, which is really, really hard. But I think you know, maybe that's something we should have a combined board meeting over because it, you know, we've had some real tragedy up there yeah, and we, don't, yeah. we just want to, and I'm specifically talking about Mott, but you've got it right across, so it'd be really good to have a, yeah, maybe, yes, look at that. I mean, it's really hard for the police and totally understand where they're coming from and with now with you know mobile phones, just takes one boy racer to spot something and they all know and they all... Yeah. yeah. I mean, kids, kids want to have fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but we want them to do it safely, and that's yeah. what it really comes down to, because there are some tricky, yeah. tricky roads in those, in both of our yeah. 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 ward areas. Well, we want them to get home to their far now, and, and that's, you know, yeah. Yeah, and then, totally right, yeah. there have been some uh, terrible things yeah. happening on Summit Road and stuff. Yep. Cheers. Uh, kia ora. Thank you. Um, Tori, just wondering where you're at with the speed limit outside the Marae along that stretch. Has there anything happened with that? Um, nothing has come forward that we are aware of. Um, that is an NZTA. Um, but I do know that, as well as council, we are looking at speed reviews. And so, um, last I heard from our council staff, roading team, is that a lot of areas around the peninsula are looking at lowering speed limits just to go and coincide with the nature of the road. Um, but how NZTA decide to do that on the state highway, we're still being left out of. Um, yeah, no, we, like I said, they're doing the speed review through council process, but NZTA are still not open with the communication with the board anyway regarding that. So it is just down the road from the school, 100k zone. Mm. And, and it is, um, can be very busy, as we saw at the Marae. Mm. So still a concern for the community, but like I say, NZTA, we would, the community board and the community would like to have open conversations with them about that. But given that we had you know, a raft of roads last year, we, we lowered the speed limits on mm. roads all across the... Peninsula, Peninsula, you know, we'd like to see some consistency for a start and sort of left hand, right hand talking to one another. But yeah, that road you're talking about, Wairi, were presumably yeah, yeah, shocking, yeah. yeah. So, so um, yeah. I know the council staff are coming back with the second round of speed review um, very shortly. So we will then raise that issue because obviously State Highway is not our jurisdiction. No. However, we would like to have some input into that. We'd like to support you on yes. other state highway ones because, um, I mean, the Little River one's an obvious, obvious one, mm -hmm. and it's that was raised with us when we went to the Marae. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you like to move it, Andrew? Yes, please. Tim, Tim Scandrick. Andrew. Um, just very briefly um, to make a comment, um, item three in the report refers to the um, joint statement of the Akaro Treated Wastewater Reuse Options Working Party, um, and I'd just like to amplify the acknowledgement of that group. Um, when it was put together three and a half years ago, it was felt that this group would need to meet on a small number of occasions um, and issue one joint statement. Um, over 20 meetings later, um, over three and a half years later, and two joint statements later, um, the group has now completed its work, and I think it's appropriate that I once again acknowledge um, Penny Carnaby as the independent chair of that group, um, who has done an amazing job in corralling the work and bringing the, the very wide range of very strongly held opinions together across that group. Um, the joint statement um, will have um, value to the hearings panel when it considers the matter um, shortly. 
Um, but I'd just like to acknowledge Penny and, in fact, all of the community members on that working party who gave of their time and who got very deeply involved in technical aspects of the work and in making sure that they were representing their communities well um, over a far longer period of time and in a far more involved way than anybody ever expected. And I think it's been a great example of how we can engage with communities early on a difficult and divisive issue um, that may well lead us to a far better outcome than we would otherwise have got to. So just an acknowledgement there. That's it. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you.